need to be. So this says the point of origin, Detroit, Michigan. So we're gonna start here, even though this is not the point of origin of Detroit, Michigan. So let's be clear. Detroit, the original inhabitants of Detroit, Ottawa, the Potawatomi, and the Ojibwe, um, live along what we now know as the Detroit River. They build their settlement along the river for trading purposes and, of course, for fishing and transportation to go from one place to the other. Of course, they were both. And these indigenous people um, had a number of settlements along the river. A number of settlements along the river. Okay? And... <laughs> Alright. Hey, look. Let me see how far. Hey, The Christopher Columbus of Detroit, Antoine de la Motha Cadillac, a Frenchman, arrived on the river bank of what we now know as Detroit. He built a fort there. The French had already been started some settlements in what we now know as Canada. They were attempting to find what is now known as the Northwest Passage. Remember that Columbus, Christopher Columbus, was sent by the Spanish. He was attempting to find a way to the Indies by going west. But he crashed in the Caribbean thinking he was in India. And he named the people Indians. And because of Columbus being, Columbus being lost, we got Indians in America. Um, and we got Indians in India. Instead of just saying, no, it, Columbus was lost. This, this man didn't know where he was going. One group of people are Indians, they from India, another group of people not. We just, re the world just renamed a whole group of people Indians. And now we got Indians in two places. And then we got some black folks who will tell you, I'm West Indian. And so we got three groups of Indians because of Columbus being lost. Well, the French said, okay, well, Columbus didn't make it to the Indies, but he was on the right track. Maybe if he had gone north a little bit, we would have been able to make it to the Indies. And they call that route the Northwest Passage. And they were trying to do the same thing. And they never made it, but they set up some settlements in Canada. And in 1701, they built the first settlement on the riverfront, and they was named Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. All right? And of course, it was right on the riverbank, they built a fort, you know, a wooded, a wooden barricaded fort, and they began to trade with the Native Americans, mainly for fur. So the fur trade begins in Detroit. They had already done, been doing it in Canada, but now they're beginning it in what they call Detroit. The French called it Detroit. And of course, they corrupted the pronunciation of the Ojibwe people to Chippewa. That's good. So Chippewa and Ojibwe, that's the same people. But it's the, Chippewa is the European corruption of their real name, Ojibwe. Okay. So they begin to trade. Of course, the most abundant animal with fur is the beaver. So beaver fur becomes the most abundant fur right, here. right in this area. But they also trade meat, ermine, raccoon, rabbit, fox, all of those other animals with fur. But beaver being the most abundant becomes the main part trade. And of course, what they're trading to the Native Americans are um, um, metal items like iron, pots and pans, rope, liquor, um, and other items that, from Europe that the Native Americans don't already have. And eventually, there becomes a trade addiction. The Native Americans become, a, they need these, they, they're now dependent on these things. And so the Europeans can take them away and use them as tools to manipulate the Native Americans. And use it as a divide and conquer technique. Same thing they did in Africa. Same thing they did in Asia. Same thing they did in South America. So they do that here in Detroit. So from 1701, to the 1760s, this was a French settlement. It started as a fort on the river, and the fort grows and grows all the way to that street right there. That becomes the limit of how far the fort goes, and the name of that street is Fort Street. 
The reason it's fort, the name of it's fort is that's the boundary of the fort. The fort came that far. They kept adding more to it, more to it, until it got that far. In the 1750s, a war between the French and the British occurred, called the French and Indian War in America. But everywhere else in the world, it was called the Seven Years War. It's the same war. The British named the war French and Indians because that's who they were fighting. They were fighting the French and the Indians. The Native Americans generally would ally more, mostly ally with the European group they came in contact with first. So they came in contact with the French prior to coming in contact with the British. So they allied more of an ally with the French than the British. So it was called the French and Indian War. The British win. From the British perspective. Yes, from the British perspective. That's why it's called that. So the British win and they become, they take over this area as well as most of Canada. They take most of Canada from the French, who took it from the Native Americans, and they take this settlement from the French, who took it from the Native Americans. Um, and other places in the world they took too. So there are other places in Asia that they took from the French. And, um, but still the French become the main residents of it. They're still the, they're still the main people living here, even though the British have political control, they're not the primary residents. Some British do settle here, but not uh, they don't outnumber the French.